Hello, welcome back to Toy Thursday with Johnny Tiger on August 5th, 2021. Continuing on my narration of representative of fantasy genres of books and novels, my favorite genre of books and novels, by the way, uh, we have so far covered Lord of the Ring, uh, Beowulf, uh, Conan the Barbarian and Greek mythology. Now, I know that some of you are thinking, here it comes, it's going to be time for Game of Thrones and uh, Harry Potter. And while that we probably can't do a fantasy series without touching upon those, I am very stubborn. <laughs> I don't like to be conventional. So, uh, while it is logical to go towards uh, Game of Thrones and, uh, and, and Harry Potter at this point, I'm going to quickly uh, take us on a little side path. One of my favorite fantasy series of books of all time, and one of the first English fantasy novels I've read, and loved, and have reread uh, maybe seven times so far, and I am already feeling the hankering to reread that again sometime soon. It's none other than The Dark Tower by Stephen King. Now, most of us know Stephen King for his horror novels, uh, such as The Stand, The Pet Cemetery. The Langoliers and Dreamcatchers. I mean, I can go on and on. Stephen King's written a lot of scary, scary monster books. I've read almost every one of them. I can never get enough of Stephen King. And by the way, his son, uh, going under the name of Joe Hill, is also a fantastic horror story writer. If you guys have not checked out, check him out. Check out Joe Hill's books. It's every bit as good as his dad was. Yes, uh, I don't know, if, is, is Stephen King still writing? Uh, I haven't seen anything new from him for a long time, but uh, I, I think he got so many books and movies out, he probably doesn't need anything new. Um, anyway, so most of us know Stephen King as a horror writer, but my first exposure to him was actually Dark Tower, which is more of a fantasy series of books. The Dark Tower depicts the journey of one gunslinger, Roland Deschain, who is the 30th descendant of King Arthur. Now, Roland is the last of his line. Every one of his friends has got wiped out when uh, there was some treachery uh, and rebellion in his kingdom. Uh, so, the world Roland came from is this kind of pseudo modern world with some modern technology but also look a lot like the old wild west they have guns they have some machines like trains and flying machines like almost like early airplane but they also have magic and swords and werewolves and vampire uh, so right off the bat uh, it's a very different kind of fantasy setting that, than what i was used to uh, most of the fantasy setting I was used to was like Lord of the Ring and uh, Conan the Barbarian. You know, just a lot of people in armors and swords and uh, magic. There's no machine, no modern technology, no guns. But uh, in Dark Tower, Roland is a gunslinger. So he does his heroism with a pair of Old West giant revolvers. And these guns were not any ordinary guns. They were forged from the remaining material from the original Excalibur sword. So these guns were powerful and uh, pretty much magical. And Roland, being the descendant of King Arthur, uh, he is stronger, f faster, uh, and can heal a little bit quicker, have very, very tough constitution. He's not quite superhuman, but he's definitely peak human in many ways, he can draw and shoot faster than anyone. He almost never missed, and he has suffered some serious injuries 
uh, and still able to uh, fight on. So uh, he's like the badass of the badass. In addition, though, in, in addition to being a good gun fighter, Roland uh, was also one of the best survivalists. He knew how to make clothes out of uh, animal pelts. He knew how to uh, survive in the wilderness. Knew how to find the medicine. Uh, and he also was uh, familiar with magical uh, means, even though he almost never performed magic himself. But he was very familiar with the magic of his world. And he knew how to identify them. He knew what kind of uh, material could uh, counter them. He knew how to uh, banish evil spirit. He knew how to fight off various uh, different kind of monsters. So. Because Roland's people got wiped out, uh, so young Roland set out on a quest to find the Dark Tower. And for the entire series of book, we see Roland traveling not just from point A to point B, but also uh, going from time to time. He sounds like uh, there were part of the book where he traveled into modern day New York and he found. Uh, allies and friends and enemies uh, and then he traveled to the past and uh, there are some very futuristic elements in, in the books as, as well. Uh, so the book is uh, very involved, very detailed, uh, it's massive time spamming fantasy of this lone survivor of his people, this gunslinger trying to find the Dark Tower because somewhere in his mind he believed but if he can find Dark Tower and get in there, he can gain the power to change the past. He believed that uh, he can use the power of the Dark Tower to undo all the damage done to his world and his people. Uh, now, the ending of the book is very, very disturbing. So I'm not going to spoil it for you here because it got nothing to do with our uh, action figures today. Um, but suffice to say, I highly, highly recommend the Dark Tower series. If you have not read the Dark Tower series, if you like fantasy, if you like uh, kind of a, a science fiction fantasy crossover, uh, if you like something a little bit out of the ordinary, but very easy to follow, very easy to read, uh, definitely check out uh, Stephen King's Dark Tower. Uh, Tower series. Now, like I said, the Dark Tower was the first series that I fell in love with, the first series in the fantasy series I fell in love with, and one of my favorite of all times. So a few years ago, when uh, Hollywood decided to make a Dark Tower movie, I was super, super excited. Finally, I'm going to see a Dark Tower movie. And the movie turned out, no surprise, kind of uh, mediocre. Uh, I'm not going to say it sucks. Uh, a lot of people think it sucks, but I think it's okay. It's, uh, I think for me, the biggest dis disappointment is because I was expecting them to follow the story of the original books. Uh, but they didn't. They, the movie they did was more like a alternate reality of what if this happened kind of scenario. So you got nothing to do with the book. Uh, it took some settings, it took the char some characters from the book, but it's nothing that happened in the book. It's not the story I was familiar with. So, but putting that disappointment aside, if you just watch it on its own as a standalone movie, it's okay. It, it's not horrible. Uh, I, I kind of enjoyed some moments of it. Uh, but mostly my enjoyment was just ruined by how disappointed I was that they didn't follow the original story and some of my favorite characters were missing. And then we came into my next big disappointment. The uh, toy company Diamond Select decided to make Dark Tower action figures. And I was like, well, okay, well, you know, I didn't enjoy the movie, but if we can get some action figures based on Dark Tower, I'm all for it. Uh, because it's one of my favorite uh, series of books. But if I can get some Dark Tower action figures, I definitely would make, uh, buy them, even though I didn't enjoy the movie. 
<laughs> and Diamond Select made two Dark Tower action figures, two characters, and quit. Didn't make any of the other characters. They made Roland the Gunslinger, the major good guy, the hero, and they made the man in black, Walter, the bad guy, the villain. And then they quit. No henchman for the villain, no uh, ally for the gunslinger, nothing. It was just just uh, two characters and they didn't make any more. And honestly, that's something that I must say about Diamond Select as a company. I really always uh, am very annoyed with Diamond Select because they do that a lot. Uh, when they took over the Sin City action figure um, for the Sin City movie, Again, they did that same thing. They made three characters and then they quit. Uh, so this is actually one reason, uh, I don't know if I mentioned last episode on Lord of the Ring that uh, Diamond Select is making Lord of the Ring action figures. I myself, I'm not buying them because knowing their track record, they're going to make a couple of characters and they quit again and we're going to end up with an incomplete uh, collection. But anyway, long story short, I did, uh, pick up Roland, the gunslinger, and his chief nemesis, the man in black. And we're going to take a look at them today, uh, the two characters from my favorite series of fantasy books. In the movie, Roland was played by uh, Idris Elba, who, even though I don't really know much about Idris Elba, and I don't really know enough about him to uh, get all excited about him. Uh, I, I heard that he has been nominated to be the best looking guy in the world several times. So uh, I think he excites a lot of people. But I, mean, I, I don't personally get very excited about him because I don't know that much about him. However, I do know that he played Roland, the gunslinger in Dark Tower. He played him uh, Heimdall in uh, Thor and the Marvel Cinematic. Uh, he also was a voice for Shere Khan in the remake of Jungle Book. So uh, Idris Elba definitely has a reputation for playing big, tough uh, characters, which means he was kind of perfect for Roland. And here we have Roland the Gunslinger standing on his face, courtesy of Diamond Select and depicting the actor uh, Idris Elba. Roland is dressed in, I believe, mostly tan and brown. Uh, correct me if I was wrong, I can't remember the color. Um, he's wearing a very neat outfit. He's got a long jacket, uh, like an overcoat, and he has a vest and shirt, and very sharply creased pants. He got a pair of revolvers he can holster on his uh, side, and on his belt, there's a horn he can uh, uh, blow into, that's called the Horn of Eld. What is the Horn of Eld? I don't think it actually ever came up in the movie, so I don't know why they inc included with the action figure, but the Horn of Eld uh, in the story is this uh, magical artifact that uh, gives the gunslingers some power to uh, uh, control uh, their courage, to boost their courage, to give them uh, extra bit of umph when they're fighting their enemy and also allow them to uh, 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 control their followers and uh, direct their followers in battle. Uh, and it's supposedly the horn that used by King Arthur himself uh, when he led his troops into battle. Uh, the action figure is in the seven inch mark. He is quite big and tall. And uh, the, all the fine details on his clothes are really well done. And I was told that the face really does look like Idris Elba. So that's definitely some uh, positivity there. Seen from the back, he definitely cuts quite a fine figure. Uh, this is one of those action figures that I really, really like how even though he is fully clothed, there's, he's not covered in uh, form-fitting spandex or stuff, spandex or stuff like that. Uh, you can definitely tell that there's a very uh, a muscular figure under all those clothes, 
uh, especially you can see uh, on his arm, you can tell where the bicep is, where all the all the bunches of material, how the material is bunching up around his muscles. Yeah, I really like it when they can uh, show that kind of physique uh, from even underneath a lot of clothes. The action figure of the gunslinger comes with his uh, pistols, of course, he has to come with them, uh, and the uh, uh, horn of out that I already mentioned. Uh, he also have two, uh, two pairs of uh, hands, actually he has five uh, hands that you can alternate with. He has fisted hand, gun holding hand, and that's a, uh, an extra hand that uh, kind of like he's doing a come here gesture. I don't know what that's about. Maybe that's for holding onto the horn of L or something. Anyway, um, but you know, you get a gunslinger action figure, you have to let him hold his gun. So pretty much default to the gun holding hand. The uh, figure also, um, and this is the strength of Diamond Select. Anytime, well, not anytime, but most time, when you buy a Diamond Select action figure, you know most of that money is going into the display base they come with. And Roland here is no exception. He comes with a very detailed display base that is worthwhile just looking at it on its own. The display base portrays a section of a bedroom. Uh, there's a wall that is taller than Roland himself. And at one side of the wall, one corner of the wall, on the floor, there's a dresser uh, sized perfectly for the action figure. Uh, the dresser's drawer don't work, unfortunately. It would be nice if they do. Um, then I could have put his extra body parts in there. Uh, there's also a bulletin board on the wall. And the figure actually came with a whole bunch of little stickers, and, like uh, pictures that you can tack onto the bulletin board, however you like. But because I couldn't see them, so I didn't know which way was the right way to tack them on, which way was up, right way up. So I just threw them away. I, I didn't bother with that. It, it's too, a little bit too gimmicky for me. And, you know, I, I wasn't going to call up a friend and say, hey, can you help me figure out uh, which stickers to tack onto the bulletin board? Nah, I just couldn't be bothered with that. Uh, the texture on the wall and the texture on the floor it's very well, very well done on this piece of uh, backdrop for the character. There's a little view of the uh, floor level, the floor of the little diorama piece. Uh, it's very well textured and definitely make you feel a little bit more like you, you uh, spent your money on something substantial when an action figure comes with a large backdrop like this. The action figure of Roland is pretty well articulated, all considering. Um, his shoulders go out to the side, forward and back, his head turns, move up and down, uh, has a very nice range of motion in his torso, his legs, uh, hips move out to the side very well. He can actually do the split. Um, and his knees are double jointed and his ankles are jointed nicely enough for him to always keep his feet flat on the floor, no matter how you pose him. The one drawback of the action figure is that he doesn't have double jointed elbows. And this is one of those action figures that I think, you know, he, he, is, a, he is a gunslinger. He should be able to move his arm in very dynamic ways. So I think a uh, double jointed elbow would definitely be nice to have in this case. Now let's take a look at uh, Roland's chief nemesis, the main villain in the movie, and one of the guys uh, that gave the good guys the most headache in the Stephen King's books, the man in black himself. And the Man in Black is not only limited to the Dark Tower. Those of you who are familiar with Stephen King novels know that the Man in Black has appeared in many, many other books, such as 
the 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 uh uh let me think uh the dragon eye of the eyes of the dragon uh the stand uh uh the regulators uh, and many many other different books that uh have this mysterious evil character that show up out of nowhere to cause mayhem for the people. He goes by many names. Some know him as Walter. Some know him as Randall. Some know him as Flag, and some simply know him as the Man in Black. In the movie, Man in Black was portrayed by、uh, Matthew McConaughey. I had to ask my girlfriend how to pronounce that name.、Uh, personally, I really don't.、Uh, Know much about Matthew McConaughey? I know he was in a lot of movies,、uh, in some TV series, and he recently wrote a book. He got his own podcast, but I really can't care enough to、uh, say if I like the guy or dislike the guy. You know, he's never really been in any movie that I like a lot, but he's never he's never given me a reason to dislike him a lot either. So whatever,、uh, Matthew McConaughey was Man in Black in the Dark Towers. As a chief uh, villain uh, who plotted against Roland. By the way,、uh, in the book,、uh, man, the man in black. Well, I just call him Walter. In the, in the book, Walter is very, very different from the what we see in the movie.、Uh, in the movie, they made him a little bit like a generic supervillain with a magical power. He can throw fire. He can incinerate people on the spot. He can. Teleport and、uh, he can do all kind of crazy magic stuff. We don't usually see things like that、uh, in the books. In the books, Walter is just as dangerous, but in a very subtle way. Walter is this guy who is going to show up, and after talking to people a few times, he's going to convince someone to commit suicide. He's that guy who is going to talk to you and convince you to go blow up the police station. He's the guy that. Incite riot. He's the guy that seduces someone's wife into cheating on the person, and then convince that person to murder his wife. His power lies in he's very persuasive. He's very convincing. He has an extreme amount of charisma, and he is very、uh, devious, very sneaky in how he put his power to use.、Uh, a little bit more like a, a ceremony. The white in Lord of the Ring,、uh, the kind of guy that can just say a few words and then you know somehow hypnotize people to jump off the top of the building. That's the kind of、uh, evil we know of Walter or Man in Black in the books.、Uh, not this fire throwing, magic blasting, blow you out of existing kind of、uh, powerhouse we see in the movie. So that's where it's very different. In the movie. Gradually, as we learn uh, in uh, more exposure to Walter in the books, we also came to realize that he wasn't always bad. He wasn't born bad. He was、uh, when he was a boy, he ran away from home and ended up homeless. And while he was on the road, he was raped by a traveler, and that experience forced him to learn magic. As a means of self-defense, and that's when Walter realized the more magic he learned, the more、uh, safe he would feel. So he started dabbling in so much magic that he gradually became the servant of the Crimson King himself. Who is the Crimson King? Crimson King is like、uh, Lord of the Rings, or, 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 or like Sauron in Sauron in Lord of the Rings. Uh, sort of the Dark Tower version of the devil.、Uh, the Crimson King is the the evil in, in persona. It's the、uh, the force that is against God. But he most of the time doesn't do any of his dirty work. He has Walter, aka Man in Black, do his dirty work for him. So here we have Walter、uh, dressed in black in a regular kind of a overcoat、uh, and. Uh, very sharply creased pants and an open throat、uh, kind of shirt underneath. He is looking a little bit skinny,、um, which might be accurate to the film. But in the book, we have always been like Walter has always been described as a 
sturdy, stur very sturdy kind of fellow. Uh, he's a middle-sized guy that uh, is uh, uh, strongly built, but not su uh, not super powerful looking. Um, the thing about Walter in the book is he is very unremarkable. Uh, he's the kind of guy that can disappear in the crowd, and you would never know that he was there. Uh, which, in some ways, kind of fits this uh, action figure. Uh, he, I was told that he does look like Matthew McConaughey. Um, other than that, there's not much to say about him. Uh, he comes with uh, a very detailed stand, uh, and he comes with a little crystal ball he can hold in his hand. In the movie, this crystal ball gives him all kind of power to see into the future, see into another universe, and uh, teleport and stuff like that, but uh, we don't really know if this is one of the 13 evil crystal balls we saw in the books or not. Uh, it's very small and I'm very nervous with this thing because if it drops on the floor, it's going to go missing. There's no way I'm going to find it. And he doesn't hold onto it all that firmly either. I think uh, Unlike the gunslinger, the main black actually got the short end of the straw as far as action figure goes. He doesn't come with any uh, different body part, different hands. He just comes with his little crystal ball and his uh, display stand. And his articulation really kind of sucks. Uh, his arm cannot even bend 90 degrees. And there's just not much you can do with this guy, which is unfortunate because when you see him in the movie he is quite dynamic with a lot of gestures a lot of uh, magical movements so you would think that with a guy like this he might have come with some magical effect maybe fire that he can uh, project onto his hand or uh, some flaming flaming effect or stuff like that or even a couple of henchmen uh, for him to boss around that would be nice uh, but no, he just he, it's just him. Uh, he's already a rather boring looking guy. He's a kind of skinny. He's uh, all in black and he's uh, in uh, jacket, shirt and pants and boots. There's really not a lot to talk about when it comes to this guy. Uh, unless you know his character background, you most likely would just see him on the shelf and you would pass him by because there's just not that much interesting about him. Even his display base is a lot more underwhelming than Roland's display base. Uh, it, again, we are seeing a section of an uh, inside of a house. This time there's no dresser, uh, no decoration on the wall. There are words written on the wall. I think the words read, Oh hail the Crimson King. So I guess that's a tribute to his uh, overlord, the guy he's working for. Uh, but other than that, there's nothing to say about this display base. It's a section of floor, a section of wall, and some writing on the wall, and nothing else. I will remark that uh, the floor uh, is very well textured. You can definitely tell uh, the, there's a, some great texturing on the floor of uh, this backdrop. Now we have just two bitter enemies standing side by side for a final shot, something that you probably will never see them do because whenever these two run to each other in the books, in the movie, they're trying to kill each other. With very good reason, uh, by the way. Uh, Walter, the man in black, want to kill Roland uh, because, well, Roland is the, gun is the last gunslinger and it, what Roland is a person who stands uh, in between him and his master's dream of world domination. But there is actually a deeper uh, reason for that. If you read the book, you know that uh, Walter hates Roland because Roland killed the only woman he's ever loved. That woman, by the way, uh, is also Roland's mom. How did that messed up bit of relationship go down? Well, if you want to know, you'll have to read the book. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Suffice to say, it's a very, very sad story, very messed up, very confused, and yeah, very sad. 
Thank you for checking out today's Toys Thursday. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. We'll be back again tomorrow for Fitness Friday. For now, have a good night.